sword is talking about those ICBM missiles. Go ahead. Terrors are upon him. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heaven shall de reveal his iniquity. Uh, it's not the heaven revealing your iniquity. That's why you want to cut. That's why you want to do away with uh, the internet. All right. That's why you want to. That's why Jay Rockefeller said it's just a damn shame that the internet was even invented. Go ahead. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart. Yeah, because the, the, the revolution in Egypt and the so-called revolution over there in Libya and the riots in Greece and all around the world, they're all going to come to the same conclusion. They're going to say it's not the, the leader, it's somebody behind the leader. And then they're going to go after you. But every, everybody's going to point the finger at America anyway. Go ahead. It says, The increase of his house shall depart, and his goods shall flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion of a wicked man from the Most High, and the heritage appointed unto him by the Most High. All right, now let's go into the article. All right, this is uh, Why Rome Never Fell. The ancient says all roads lead to Rome. I'm sorry, the ancient saying all roads lead to Rome is still true. Though this city's history is celebrated, its future, and, as, its future as revealed in the Bible shows we haven't seen the last of Rome yet uh, by David v Vigil. It says, what else then is all history but the praise of Rome? Thus, as Renaissance scholar Petrarch, uh, during his lifetime, uh, Europe had finally emerged from the dark times instigated by the fall of the Roman Empire. When Rome collapsed, gone uh, gone was the impressive infrastructure of the great Roman civilization. Now, <laughs> that was the first indication that Rome was falling. All right? Just like if you have an article, let me know. I'll pass the mic to you. The infrastructure, matter of fact, uh, one of the elders had did a, a series on that, and you'll see it up so you can watch it. Um, basically, it was called the, the uh, I guess, the, down, the breaking down of America. I forget the, the actual title, but, but you'll see it, you know. Um, and that's like it happened in ancient Rome. Rome It's happening right now in America. All right, go ahead. It says, when Rome collapsed, gone was the impressive infrastructure of the great Roman civilization. Its road system, its water supply network, its artistic... Yeah, its road system, just like here. Your bridges are, are ready to collapse. Your water supply system, like now you're drinking this nasty-ass water. That's why you have to buy water. Go ahead. Uh, water main breaks. Water main breaks, yep. It's artistic and scholarly endeavors that fill thriving urban centers. Rome's destruction left a continent roiled in violence, consumed by warfare, stricken with plagues. What's happening in America? Uh, you, 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 you've been in, um, you've been in uh, the Middle East... Uh, really, when you went to Iraq, when you invaded Iraq, that was that was by uh, Daddy Bush, and that was back in what 1991. So 91, 2001, almost 20 years. On and off. Now, you've been in um, Afghanistan, the, the the longest war that the United States fought or conflict was the uh, Vietnam conflict. Well, you being in Afghanistan, you broke that record. And now they're talking about the other day that some, they, they, there should be uh, a military to come in and help the people in um, Libya. But they said no nation, well, they said the UN doesn't have its own army, which is bullshit because they have the U UN peacekeeping force. But they're trying to get other nations to, to, to bring their military to help the uh, Libyan people, but no one wants to volunteer. So they're kind of hitting at America or the U.S. military going up in there, and they're going to wind up going up in there, you know? I mean, only time will tell. We'll see. But if they don't go to Libya, they're going to damn sure go into Iran. 
But it said in um, Ezekiel the 38th chapter that um, Gog and Magog is going to be a watcher, a guard over, over them. So in order for them, the, the prophecy to be fulfilled, a miracle is going to have to have his, its foot. Because a miracle is part of that. The U.S. was a part of uh, that Egyptian revolution and the Libyan revolution. That's why it's all in the media. All right? Go ahead. It says, Rome's destruction left the continent roiled in violence, consumed by warfare, stricken with plagues, and incapacitated politically. Incapacitated politi politically. They're talking about on the news that come March 4th, which is a couple of days from now, they, they might shut down the federal government. Ever since the Republicans came in, you have the Democrats, which are a joke, and you have the Republicans, which are a bigger joke. So this political system is a big joke, man. And the average people, the average person, they're beginning to see it. Go ahead. In the Dark Ages, Europeans yearned for the cohesion and stability brought by Rome and its church. Rome's majestic ruins were a living history, a light that beckoned Europe's rulers to restore the city's heritage. Yeah, it was the Lucifer of that time. It was, it was the, uh, the light bearer. Go ahead. A light that beckoned Europe's ruler to restore the city's heritage and former glory. When Petrarch penned his question, Europe had already seen three rebirths of the Roman Empire, three periods of perceived peace come and pass. Since his death, three more have risen and fallen. Its seventh and final resurgence is on the scene today. Remarkably, among all the Roman Empire's resurrections, none was led by Italy, its home territory. And though Italy hasn't been prominent since the collapse of the Roman Empire, the city of Rome has always played and continue to play a dominant role. Why is Rome still so prominent even now? The capital cities of the other world ruling empires mentioned in the Bible, the Chaldeans, Persian, and Greek empires, if they still exist, have nowhere near the global influence. Uh, interestingly, no other world ruling empire was ever named solely after its capital city. They have all been named after the people. Excuse me. The Roman Empire, however, is not the Latin Empire after the Latin people who lived in, cer in central Italy. And those who established the empire are not called Latin either. They are the Romans. It all centers on Rome. Again, why? The answer lies in Rome's history, which when properly examined, traces all the way back to the beginning of man's civilization. Uh, war and displacement. Rome's history is a history of war. Its empire was built through incessant war. Its expansion sparked several demographic trends. The first was the centuries of warfare exhausted the people of Rome and central Italy. In the beginning of its expansion, Roman military politics forbidding soldiers to marry slowed population growth even more. And the children sired by soldiers weren't granted Roman citizenship. Right. The children sired by soldiers, meaning if you go to another nation or you, um, a Roman soldier, uh, impregnates a uh, woman of another nation, if that baby was uh, half uh, Roman, Edomite, and half Elamite, and they saw that the baby was dark, they wouldn't, they wouldn't accept him as being a citizen of Rome. All right? Go ahead. The massive size and rapid expansion of the Roman Empire made it inevitable that it would one day run out of people to govern its territory. But these realities substantially hastened that demographic implosion. Rome's solution to the lack of manpower was to import slaves and extend citizenship to loyal subjects, thereby extending the Roman name beyond the original people. The records are thin on how many slaves were imported to Italy and their specific origin, but it is believed that by the end of the Roman Empire, more than one-third of the population were slaves. The flood of slaves into Rome was particularly strong after the Great Conquest. The Romans were known for freeing their slaves and granting their descendants citizenship. Like, for example, the Apostle Paul. Um, you got that? See if you can get the uh, Zandervan's dictionary and look up the Apostle Paul. The difference between the Apostle Paul and the uh, the Apostles... Uh, Peter, James, John, was that 
he was he was educated he was learnt and he was a citizen of Rome but he was an Israelite so that showed you that backs up what what the brother just read what what the elder just read that they allowed uh, slaves or former slaves to become Roman citizens all right because Paul was from a prominent household all right go ahead uh, this is in the Zondav if you have to read the whole thing if you can find the point yeah, or he was a Roman citizen. 